Good evening and welcome to the Return Homestead. My name is Mike and my wife Marty and I homestead 50 acres in southeastern Kentucky. Today we're really excited to give you guys the first garden tour of the year. We actually shot this garden tour yesterday so some of the footage you're going to see is from yesterday. Uh, we did have a corrupted video though so we lost a lot of the footage. We're going to go ahead and do that tour again today so we make sure you guys don't miss out on anything. Today we're going to go through the garden and show you where we're at right now. This here is a squash that gets to be about 18 to 24 inches long. It's orange like a pumpkin. I'm not going to pronounce it. <laughs> but they're huge squash and I'm hoping they winter well. Over here is the only living grapevine we have. And yeah, that one managed to come back after the freeze. But the two brand new grapes that we put in, yeah, they didn't quite make it. These are our half runner beans. As you can see, we gotta get the trellises up. They're really reaching now. More trellising. Yep. And at the end of this row are an Appalachian thing, and it's called greasy beans. They don't taste greasy, they look greasy, but they're just a green bean. So we had to try them, so we put those in down here. Yeah, we went into our local feed store just buying feed for the animals and when we went inside on the counter there were multiple little Ziploc baggies of all sorts of different beans. They were all greasy beans. They come in many different shapes and sizes and they were all labeled with the counties they came from. So we decided we needed to try the local flavors. They also had a little story from each family that was growing them. So it was kind of cool. This mulberry we are seeing some growth at the bottom. This froze, it had leafed out. It froze when we got the big freeze after everything had leafed out. I think we're gonna be able to save this. So we got hit by Kentucky's Blackberry Winter. This Watch other this mulberry also was completely denuded. It looked horrible, but it's recovering well. It looks Even great. the main stems are growing good now. Yeah, tomatoes. We already need to tie them up again. And as you can see, they already need prune. This one's almost hitting the ground. Something we didn't have in the desert was blight or powdery mildew. Here, it's a big deal. So if you have powdery mildew, it's a tablespoon. Don't, I believe it's a tablespoon per gallon of water and you spray them and that will take care of that. The blight, you just got to have tablespoon airflow. of baking soda, baking I'm sorry. Soda. <laughs> Read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't come through on camera. <laughs> yeah, huh. So they're doing very well. They're all responding quite well. Definitely need to prune them again. The plan is to keep them pruned up to the bottom of the trellis at the very least. So we'll keep removing the lower branches until we have nothing but stock up that high. And remember, don't do that with determinate tomatoes. Determinate tomatoes have a determinate amount of fruit. You cut off branches, branches and you're gonna lose that. They produce fruit all at one time, it's one and done. These will keep vining up until the frost hits them. Got a couple of elderberries growing right here in the middle of the garden. They're doing extremely well this year. We actually transplanted this one from Nevada. It was just getting its legs when we moved and it is definitely flourishing here. We're gonna to have to start moving some of the stems out. It's spread out quite a bit more than we intended. It likes Kentucky. It definitely does. This is my kitchen garden. So I have mo mostly brassicas in here, which are cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli. Any of the stinky vegetables usually are brassica. <laughs> These are cabbage. This is the Dutch flathead. I've planted big mammoth uh, gray stripe sunflowers in here, hoping that the leaves, which get very large, will shade the brassicas and keep them from bolting. That's the hope. Here well, we have some more. To be seen. And a random tomatillo. As you can see, bolting is an issue this time of year for a lot of things. This is cilantro. And it's already uh, gone to flower. We'll be getting seeds off of this one. They yeah. will reseed themselves. Even though this is a annual here, it will reseed itself. In fact, when we hit negative five, this was still going. Still going, It yeah. likes the cold weather. These are English peas. 
Nope, these are sugar snap peas. They're about ready to pick. The groundhog got a lot of the plant, but as you can see, it wants to live. Looks like the heat's starting to impact it a little they bit. They are a cold weather plant as well. So I don't know how many sugar snap peas we're gonna get this year. We've got quite a few. These are English peas. See how fat they are? These you'll pop and it's the little peas you see in with peas and carrots. I love them. We use, this, we use them a lot in stir fry. I'm hoping that it will trellis on over. We'll see. And this, onions just stuck in everywhere, huh? Yes, and they're starting to bolt. So they have not totally bulbed yet. And basically, this means they're not going to overwinter. And in fact, you might get brown spots right around the core of it. Uh, once they bolt, they're usually done. I'm going to let them go a little further. I'm hoping to get a little more bulb out of them. More sunflowers. My kale is doing phenomenal. I'm going to be picking and harvesting this. I will throw it in freezer bags. And then this winter time, I will freeze dry it and make kale powder. Again, more, yeah, I know. Uh, onions that are bolting. Broccoli, cauliflower, more brassicas. This is... <laughs> what? Tomatillo. Tomatillo? Mm-hmm. That's great for making salsa verde. Salsa verde, good yep. stuff. These are our white potatoes. Oh, I see a bug on it. Oh, those Japanese beetles. Well, that is a ladybug. Uh, nope, it, yeah, it is, isn't it? I'm not sure what kind of beetle it is. We're gonna have to investigate that one and find out. I got one right here too. But when we find the bugs, we just remove them and squish them. They There's have been. another one. That's a Japanese beetle right here. It's definitely a Japanese beetle. <laughs> We've been trying to keep them off of here. It's been about seven days since I hit them with the neem oil. So we're going to have to come back with some more neem oil because there's a ton of the beetles back on it again. They're all over the place. Are they? And this was the big surprise that we had in our potato patch. It's coming back up though. It is starting to stand back up, but we came out here last night and there was this big crater in the middle of our potato patch. And you can see they're about oh, two and a half feet tall. And all of a sudden, right in the middle, everything had laid over. And there's no pathway in from an edge where a large animal may have come in and laid down in the middle. Crop circles. Crop circles in Kentucky in our potato patch. So if anybody has any idea what could have caused the potatoes to just lay over in the middle of the bed like that, uh, please let us know in the comments. Wow, they're heavy on here tonight. Yeah, I see the beetles everywhere. They weren't out there this afternoon like that. No. So Dang. may have to get up a little early and hit them with some neem oil in the morning. Yeah. And then heading down the hill here, we have our blackberries. These were a gift from one of our neighbors as we moved in. He heard we like blackberries and he went and dug up a bunch of roots from his garden, brought them over so we could get our own little patch started. These are a thornless blackberry. He brought us some of the fruit last year, made for some fantastic cobbler. So we're looking forward to seeing some of these blooms turn into berries. These blackberry things, jam. Oh, and blackberry jam, fantastic. These things are very uh, aggressive. They do grow quickly and these canes will actually grow long enough they will bend over and go back and touch the ground and the little growing tip will simply root itself in start another plant so these are easy to propagate right above the blackberries are the sweet potatoes these were the extra ones um, that i purchased and we had to find a spot for you guys saw me making the video about putting these things in We've got two different types. We've got a white sweet potato. Yes, and this is the Beauregard, and the which Beauregard. is the purple. Right above the sweet potatoes is our one and only pear tree. This is a self-pollinating pear tree. Normally with pears, you need two different types in order to get the right pollination. This one will self-pollinate. We've already got fruit on it. This is our second year of having this. We have a great nursery here that we get trees like that and they're very reasonable 
so this thing has not grown that much but it looks like a full-fledged tree to me that's a nice tree it's doing well we've got only a handful of pears on it this year we were uh, hoping for a little better harvest from it but we had the same problem uh, with the pears that we did with our apples so our apple trees started putting on blooms and then we got a cold snap and all the blooms fell off uh, this tree did set oh 10 or 15 apples they've already fallen off um, so it doesn't look like we're going to get much of an apple harvest this year And then back here underneath the, or between the apple and the pear. We have a turkey fig. Now the goats did a little landscaping for us one day when we were gone. The goats <laughs> took the bark off. Um, I accidentally left a hole in the fence and they took advantage, came out, decided to chew around in the garden and they enjoyed eating all the growing tips off of the fig. But it is starting to come back out down at the bottom so it the is. roots are sound. It is. We'll wait and see what develops out of that. Thank goodness. So when we moved in, this was kind of a useless hillside. One of my first projects was to come out here and put in a couple of swales. And the whole purpose was to get some blueberries planted. We got these from uh, the local um, extension, extension surface. Yeah, office. so we went to the extension office and got these. And they haven't grown very good, but we are starting to get some blueberries. What do you think? Not quite. They're still tart. They're Just still a little good. bit. Mm -hmm. They're a little tart. So we got the swale set up to try to keep the water uh, on the hillside as much as possible. Make sure that these guys got plenty of water when it rains. And in these buckets up against the porch, we've got a bunch of Swiss chard. Guys, we've been harvesting this stuff and throwing it in some bacon grease and cooking it down. It mixes in with just about anything else you're eating. But Fantastic it is starting stuff. to bolt. Yeah, we've got a couple of them that have decided it's a little too hot, so they're bolting. Even though they're in the afternoon shade. But most of what you see is growth in just the last week because we've harvested a couple of times. And that a random like a sunflower. sunflower. Yeah. <laughs> we do enjoy our sunflowers, so they've uh, kind of been spread around the property. Sugar Rush Peach. I have Jalapeno. Bell peppers, Jimmy Nardello, which is also spicy, Corbacci, also spicy, Advarsky, sweet pepper. We just grabbed some bell peppers the other day to fill in a couple of holes. So, so just your basic bell pepper. Put I've them got up at Lowe's. Janie peppers, which are peppers <laughs> that our neighbor gave us. I saved seed and I have planted those. What As you guys you? can tell, we enjoy our peppers. This is artichokes. I'm not really fond of the fruit, but I like the plant. It is pretty. This is what happens. This is my eggplant, and it's been attacked by beetles. This is what happens. I've got some leaves on the bottom that aren't totally shredded like Swiss cheese, and we are treating it, but this is what they'll do to you. Those and the Japanese beetles will do that. I'm not seeing any pests on there now, and I don't see any new destruction so we treated these when we first noticed the infestation when these leaves suddenly turned up with all these holes in it we tried um, first coming in with just some diatomaceous earth uh, that was not really successful in slowing things down so we have since uh, also added neem oil so we're uh, spraying with neem oil every seven days to hopefully keep this in check don't see any pests on it right now so hopefully the plant can recover i'm hoping so because this this is, was great as eggplant. It's not been a big, big one for me. Oh, I have habaneros too. <laughs> don't forget the habaneros. Yeah. A lot of people don't like those. I love them. They are so incredibly hot. Over here in this hot mass, our Zucchino Rampicante. And those are seeds that I got from Baker Creek. They're uh, huge. They get really big, long. They're a Italian zucchini. And uh, when you slice them and fry them, they taste like potatoes. Yeah, we really enjoy the zucchinos. And we've grown them as long as three, four feet. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll twist around back on themselves, make some really crazy looking squash. Fantastic to eat, though. The other thing is they're resistant to... Uh, 
vine borers and squash bugs, both of something that we never had in Nevada, but we have here. Yeah, it's been really interesting making that switch from the Nevada desert to southeastern Kentucky. There are a lot of pests that we have to deal with here that we didn't have to deal with there. About all we had was uh, rabbits and lots of coyotes running through. Squirrels. Squirrels. With all those stupid tomatoes. ground squirrels, yeah. And this is the corn. Now, people in this area are having a little trouble getting germination on corn. I actually had to do a second harvest. Or a second planting. Or a second planting, yeah, yes. Yeah, so we reseeded. You can see the smaller plants here. And then the larger plants further down the row, Marty came back in and reseeded. I don't know, she was uh, at least two weeks behind the original planting. So harvest is going to be a little bit unusual, trying to figure out which corn is ready and which is not quite ready. If you ever plant amaranth, <laughs> you will always have amaranth. So amaranth was, this is amaranth. And it's a little bit cumbersome to process. We never ended up doing it. We get powdery mildew really bad here. Something again, we didn't get in the desert because it was dry. But this has grown from compost that we had that obviously had seed in it. So I'm have to go through and pull all of this. I rue the day that I ever planted that. Yeah, the Amaranth chickens is, uh, won't eat it or Yeah, nothing. the chickens won't eat it. Um, we were hoping we'd enjoy it, but you know, processing the stuff is just really difficult. So well, it's little tiny grains, almost like quinoa. Yeah. But uh, you've got to thresh it. Really hard to clean up. Yeah. So the corn, you can see we've got lots of weeds growing up in the corn right now. That's not a big deal. I'm waiting for it to get about a foot, foot and a half tall, and then I'm going to run the tiller back through here and cultivate. And then down at the end of the rows, I've already got uh, some chicken manure sitting in the wagon, just waiting on these plants to reach the right size, and we'll throw that manure in there to help them grow big and strong. The mystery of the potato patch. Yeah, the plants aren't broken, they're just pushed over. Something was in there, but I don't see how it got in. No, it's a completely closed circle. The only thing I can think of that this could possibly be is a bird of prey, uh, either a hawk or an eagle. Well, we have them here. Coming down, yeah, smacking into it. I mean, it almost looks like a, uh, a meteor crashed in here. Huh, we'll if water it. If it was a dog or even a deer, there would be a path and there's into none. the potatoes, and there is no path through here indicating how they got in. That Guys, is... uh, you may think it's a good idea to plant your potatoes tight, but if you want to work the rows, not a good idea. This is uh, difficult to do. It's a little weak at the bottom. Maybe They're just broken. water? Uh, I think we water them and see if they'll come back up again. They okay. should be fine once they uh, straighten back out. Okay. That is really weird. It is weird. It wasn't that way this morning. But come over here and uh, and look at this. So you can see just me walking carefully up in the potatoes left a little bit of a trail. So whatever struck here had to come from above. Hmm. Weird. Very weird. All right. I can see some trail cams in our future. <laughs> we need trail cams. Yeah, we do. And this is our herb garden, or the tiered garden. These tiers were already here when we got here. Not we did amend them. Yeah, we amended them. It's not exactly how I would have built these, but it was functional. The uh, soil was almost 100% clay. Not really a lot for growing plants in. Hey, Domino. So we did amend them pretty heavily. And the strawberries, at least, love what we've done here so we've got we need to pick oh at least a quart of strawberries coming in every day i can see some strawberry jam in my future basically i'm just picking them putting them in 
quart freezer bags so I can process them all at one time. Yeah, you know, there's no reason to get in a hurry or try to worry about strawberries going bad. We just throw them in the freezer and we'll take them out and make jam when we're able to. This is bee balm. Bee balm, it's, it's struggling here, but it, if you don't put it in a container, it'll take over your garden. It is a member of the mint family, I believe. If not, it behaves just like mint. They are struggling in those little pots. They huh? are. Then they have good drainage, so it's not that. And this is what uh, we thought was wild lettuce. At least that's what we thought we were buying seed-wise. Any of you guys that know wild lettuce, when you look at the underside of that leaf, you'll know this isn't wild lettuce. So we need to come out here and identify this, find out exactly what it is. So again, we've got oh, cilantro yeah. that has bolted. Cilantro slash coriander. It's so I'm already. saving the seed. Basically, it will. It's a. It's a annual here, but it reseeds itself very well, so it behaves like a perennial. Just like one. Yeah, I tell you, from just one of these plants, we can get enough coriander seeds to last us for the next three years. So they do put off a lot of seed. More strawberries. <laughs> strawberries just popping up well, everywhere. Well, when they send, they send out runners from the mother plant, you cut them yeah, off and bury them. Here. So these runners will shoot off from the mother plant and that little tip of it will actually grow into a new strawberry plant. So that's how they spread throughout the bed. I've got basil coming up now. I need oh, to weed. Growing. Yeah, it is. This is lettuce leaf yeah, basil. Yeah. So they get real big. This is a weed. <laughs> <laughs> That's one easy way to tell in your herb garden what's a weed and what's not, guys. Just uh, grab a piece of it, crush it between your fingers, and if it's not an herb, you'll know real quick. Huh. No this idea? is calendula. I thought it was, but I don't think that it is. It doesn't look like a calendula, no. But that is. That is. That is. More that onions. About to bloom. Got the calendula about to pop out here. Lots of onions. You calendula them is everywhere. A, a great medicinal herb. Go ahead and look it up and see what it's good for. It's great for soaps and lotions and stuff like that. It's very uh, soothing. This is also calendula. So basically what I did <laughs> is I got some seeds. I threw them and every one came up. So it's a super easy herb to grow. Um, and I save the flowers and make teas. I've been thinning them out and spreading them around the property. They are annual or perennial. Thank you. So they'll come back every year. One and done. The chickens are really getting anxious about dinner. This is sage. It has gone to bloom. It doesn't change, change the taste of the uh, herb at all. So I leave it for the pollinators. What the flowers like? I've never tasted the flowers. When it smells like sage, it doesn't really have much of a taste. And more onions. More onions, more calendula. And more sage. And more sage. Up there, the big plant is mullein. It's also known as Adam's Rod. It's got very soft leaves. Pioneer Aaron's shoes. Rod. Aaron's Rod. I'm From the sorry. Bible, yeah. Um, <laughs> And it's the flowers that you make a tea out of. It's supposed to be soothing, they say, to the lungs. Again, do your research on that, but I've got it growing everywhere. It is an annual here, or a perennial here, so it, even in negative five degrees, it, it continued to stay yeah, it green stayed and green grow. the whole, whole And winter. so did the sage. I've got some tarragon up there and some more balm. That one's getting ready to bloom. I've got, uh, echinacea growing in there hey knock it off i got ex <laughs> echinacea going in there as well i have a lot of medicinal herbs and guys we're just getting started with the herbs and trying to understand exactly what they're good for so we don't want to give out advice uh, if we haven't tested it and know enough about it to say so but we'll share with you what we do know and always encourage you to do your own research this is also a, kind of an interesting thing that we didn't plant, plantain. We've got plantain all over the place. Uh, Marty makes some fantastic salve with them. This tiered garden is a work in progress. Eventually we're going to get it, sorry about that. Eventually we're <laughs> going to get it uh, graveled. 
Yeah, we'll get some gravel in here. I want to shore up some of the uh, the walls. As you can see, they're not holding up very well. The staircase is uh, a little bit dangerous. So we're going to be making some corrections to this. Probably next not year. until next year. Yeah. Next year. This is next year's project. We've got to fix this. Get rid of the tires. It's a mess. It's a hot mess. Yeah, I'm not even going to show you guys the tires. They're they're almost embarrassing. Uh, we're not liking them there, but they're there. And it's just a project that's going to have to wait for a little bit. Remember what Joe said. There's always more to do, and it'll all get done. You just can't get in a hurry about it. Again, this keeping up with the weeds here is bad. We're going to have to put landscape fabric everywhere. Yeah. But rosemary's up there. I've got some celery up there. You just got to get through the weeds. And it's a daily thing here. And we are experimenting with the... Thank you, William. We are experimenting with the row cover this year. We haven't used that before. Uh, one other item we do want to experiment with as a way to control weeds is wood chips. We just haven't been able to source any locally yet. Now, the only herb that I don't have that I've been looking everywhere for is comfrey. Comfrey is really good to use as fertilizer. It's also good to make salves out of. I've tried finding it everywhere here locally. I cannot find it. If you know of a good source, let me know. So there you go, everybody in southeastern Kentucky. Uh, if you know of a source for buying some comfrey root, we'd love to get that started here on our property. Looks like it's really easy to grow, very easy to propagate, and we just can't find any of the roots. So this is the Aaron's rod that we were looking at there in the herb garden. This one is out in Marty's art garden out front. And as you can see, they are absolutely massive. And those leaves are highly medicinal, very useful in dealing with respiratory problems. It's the flowers. I, I love want, these though. things, yeah. I'm going to have to harvest these. They're to that point now, aren't they? Yeah. And that is our garden for the year. Uh, we've gotten everything planted. We're just trying to manage and maintain it, make sure it gets plenty of water on it. We do have some more manure left for compost uh, so that we can keep these fertilized and keep things growing well. It's just a matter of waiting for harvest time and then it's going to be scrambled to get everything off of the plants and get it all can jarred, freeze dried and put away for the winter. We appreciate you joining us for this our very first garden tour. We'll be doing probably one a month of these garden tours just to keep you up to date on what's going on out there in the garden. Vegetable garden. The vegetable garden. Marty will also be doing some tours of her art garden out front uh, just to let you guys know what's going on out here. We appreciate you joining us here on the Return Homestead. Please do subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that like button while you're in there, and we'll see you next time.